Hello everyone, this is Mae Larson. Welcome to my channel and we are going to be creating a lap book junk journal album and we are going to be using Sherry Baldi's junk journal digital files. I will post the link below as to where to purchase this. If you use the coupon code JUNK10, that is J-U-N-K-10, all caps, you will get 10% off these digital files. Just go to mybestiesshop.com, enter the code, and you'll get 10%. There's no expiration date, so you can use it as many times as you want, um, as long as they are for just the junk journals, not anything else on her store, just to make that clear. Um, so we're going to be uh, creating a junk journal series. The first series is going to be part one, which is creating the book cover, the outside part. And then as we go through the series, we'll do the signature, signature pages, um, embellishments, and any other thing that might come up as we're going along. Now, this is a winging it kind of a deal thing. So, you know, there might be some bloopers, just so you know. Now, what are you going to be needing for this um, tutorial? You're definitely going to be needing um, cardstock, 12 by 12, three sheets, chipboard, um, about three sheets of a 12 by 12 card, uh, chipboard. You're also going to be needing, um, let's see, uh, glue, some wax thread. Now below, if you don't mind, I have a Amazon affiliation um, links. I have posted some of my favorite things there. If you don't mind using those links, that helps me a little bit to replenish some of my supplies. There is a book binding kit that I use in there. It has your awls or your piercing tools, your bone folder, your wax thread, your needles that you're going to be needing um, to create this junk journal. And that is very important. So that kit comes with everything you need um, to include your needles, your wax thread, um, and your paper clips to clip down your, your signatures and your bone folder. You're going to need that and some scissors. So there's so much that kit has. So be sure to use that link. There's also some PVA glue that I highly recommend. It's wonderful for book binding. When I used to work at the library, it is the glue that we use down at the library. For this video, I am going to be using this one here because it's what's at my hands and um, that's what we're going to use. We're also going to use some half inch score tape and quarter inch score tape. Um, I have the quarter inch uh, coming in on order. You will be using some coffee dye. Now I use my coffee and I put a couple drops of alcohol to preserve it. You will use your scissors of course. A brayer helps a lot to burnish um, this particular stuff. I highly recommend the Victor ruler because it has the 1 16th, the 1 8th, and it's a great ruler to have on hand. You will also need a pencil to make some markings here and there. Um, I'm using this um, purple tape that Young Sue gave me, but you can use masking tape or painter's tape. This is just to pin down your paper when you're marking. And I'm also going to use this little, it's like a T square. Um, guide from Tim Holtz to help me guide me. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, you're also going to need some distress inks and below I put an, a link. These are some brushes that I, um, my daughter had some makeup brushes. She had given me one. It's wonderful. I have seen the one. It's for $50 for a test set of 10. This is an exact same thing. It works great to blend. It works a lot better than the Tim Holtz little spongy thingies, those tend to start break up and this is great. I love it and I put a link below um, for $8.47 you get a pack of 10 plus a sponge and I think, oh and glue sticks. If you don't mind getting some glue sticks right now it's a perfect time to buy these. Um, Walmart has some back to school sales. You're going to need that. You're going to need your sewing machine and embellishments. Anyway, you guys ready? I know you are. So let's start this series. 
I am going to try to keep this um, down to about an hour um, or so. So just so you know, I'm going to try to keep them down. It's not always going to be that, but that is my goal since I do know that we're going to be doing quite a bit with this. All right, so I want you to cut one of your cardstock that's 12 by 12. I want you to cut it at 5 and a half by 12, and you'll keep your two 12 by 12. On one end, I want you to take... Um, move these out of the way, your half inch score tape, if you don't mind, and applying it to one of your sheets on each end, and then putting your five inch towards your left, your five and a half inch towards your left, and then the other 12 inch on your right. So you'll have the five and a half inch by 12, the 12 by 12, and the 12 by 12 joined together by your score tape, okay? I did not do that for the video, but you guys get to hint. Now, one of the things that I also want to keep in mind that you guys make sure that your cardstock is not very heavy. Anything less than 85 pounds um, will tend to break. Anything over 85 pounds, you're going to put some muscles to it and you're going to have to use good glue. So make sure it's about 85 pounds, not too, um, not 65. Stay away from the 65. That will break and it's not what we want for your cover. You want at least 85 no more than that because more than that you're going to be putting some serious muscles in trying to work your paper and um, especially when you're scoring okay so get your um, painters tape I'm going to use this a bit more because that one's starting to I use it for several things already I try to recycle that alright so get your um, paper cut and get your um, glue ready and get your score and burnishing things ready now I'm using the Tim Holtz guide here and I'm going to see this little dot down here I don't know if you guys can see I need to probably zoom out a little okay so down here you see some little dashes I'm going to line my paper right on there I'm going to take my painter's tape or this little purple stuff that young Sue gave me. Um, paint, painter's tape is the exact same thing. I'm going to line my paper up to that dash and place my tape. Oh, I dropped that. You're also, now that I just saw my crocodile on the side here. You're also going to be needing um, your crocodile eyelets and brads. If you have corner punches or any border punches, those would be very handy if you want to use fancy little things on your your paper. Um, so you get that. Then if you have a T ruler, I have this little guy from Tim Holtz. Down here you see that it has a um, marking and then it has a quarter inch marking. We're going to just put that right up there. Um, line it up just like so. What this is going to do is going to help me line up my chipboard so it's all nice and even. Now if you have the Tim Holtz ruler, that's also going to be really helpful because it's an eighth of an inch in width right there and, and it's helped to get your um, spacing in between your chipboard. Now, chipboard. We are going to cut two pieces at one and a half, one and a half by eight and three quarters, two pieces, dos, two, one and a half by eight and three quarters, one piece that is seven, I mean, sorry, one piece that is one inch by eight and three quarters, one that is eight and three quarters, one piece that is four and a half by eight and three quarters, here eight and three quarters, everything's gonna be eight and three quarters. Four and a half by eight and three quarters, and three of five and a half by eight and three quarters. Three of them. And this is very thick chipboard. I will put the link for my uh, Amazon affiliated link. Make sure you use that. That really helps me out a lot. Also, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and share it with others. 
Um, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. When I get to 1,500 subbies, I will give away a $100 gift card to your craft store of choice. All right, so make sure you share, share, share. And if you do share and they subscribe, tell them to say who referred you, who referred them, so I can keep um, track of that and put your name on the drawing. All right. The more referrals, the more your chances are of winning. All right, so take out your four and a half inch piece of chipboard, okay? And grab your glue. I'm probably gonna have to stand here in a minute. Now, you also wanna make sure if you're using cardstock that has that white insert, it's like, a, I don't know, it's. The outside it's colored, but the inside you can see if you tear it up, it's white. You want to stay away from that one because if you start to score and it cracks, man, it's going to pick that up really quick. You don't want that one, okay? Um, make sure you're putting plenty of glue as well. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that, okay? All right, so take your four and a half inch. And you're going to go in about an inch and a quarter. I'm going to stand up because this is helpful. If you stand up, an inch and a quarter at least. And lay it down. And it's going to lay firmly against this. Okay. Press down as best as you can down. And you can hold it and take your brayer and just kind of burnish it in. I like to hold it so it's not moving because it is wet glue. Now you can use your score tape. I just didn't have enough to go around. I generally normally do that. Um, the glue normally helps. Um, but it's like a P good PVA glue. Now this is my first time. Um, I didn't have the PVA that I highly recommend for bookbinding. Um, and I had this Aline one, Aline, whatever her name is. So I'm trying to use what I have. I, I like Tonics Craft Tacky Glue because it works great with chipboard and it's a very good PVA. It's actually a good PVA glue. Um, but again, I didn't have any hands. So press down firmly, take your time, and Get in there really good. If you're having a hard time with that guide, you can take and tape it down a little. Take um, your Tim Holtz ruler and you're going to put it against that one chipboard. Grab your one inch chipboard. Find this glue. I'm going to have to have my husband move this camera just to, I don't know. He did a little device mechanism there, guys. I don't know. It's kind of, let me zoom in. There we go. It's kind of not, not, not sitting where I want it, so I might have to have him adjust that. All right. So... made in there like so use your Tim Holtz ruler to get a good gusset and then press firmly Now you want to make sure that um, this is not on the edge of your next chipboard, the little spacing, okay? All right, so wipe up, get your paper, wipe it up. Now, now you want to get your, um, let's pull that down in place and burnish it.
Grab your five and a half inch one. I'm wanting to grab to the front because I see the other glue bottles in there and I ran out of those. I have to refill them. Now the other thing that I highly recommend is don't skip out on your um, Score tape, don't buy that cheap stuff. Um, just because score tape, there's, I know, I just saw Amazon had a really good deal and it sounded wonderful. However, that stuff is not so good. That cheap score tape. So you want to stay off of that, okay? As much as you can, stay off of the cheap score tape. It sounds so good to be true, it's because it is. So. All right, so hold it there and place it. So, That Tim Holtz guide really helps getting in your gussets so you're not going overboard. I trend, I don't like to eyeball it on stuff like that because I like things to be precise. So if you can use that, use it. If you need another hand, call somebody in to hold it for you, you know. But I strongly recommend you use that. It's very helpful. Okay, grab now your one and a half inch piece of chipboard. Again, I keep going over here. I need to move it over here. Let's move this here so I can use it as a... Pour my glue. Watch me try to grab on the other side now because I got used to going over there and looking for it. That's perfect. Look, hey, look what the twine was good for, huh? Okay, all right, so now nudge it in. I like to hold it in place a little, secure it, you know. I want to make sure you get really good contact between the chipboard and your um, your cardstock. And one thing I do notice that with this. Um, that's why I say get good glue. That is so super important. Um, of course, I didn't have this for here. Um, I have to put it on my purchase list for next month. But you want to get that PVA glue that I have listed because it's really good. And it's very helpful for these kind of things. Also, if, if not, just get that Craft Tacky Glue, the Tonic Craft Tacky Glue. I like that one. It's very good um, PVA glue as well. Yeah. 
get good pressure down on them. There's some pr I'm pressing down because I don't want this baby to lift up. Okay. So get good, good down pressure. Okay. Next one you're going to put is your other five and a half, but we're going to move our tape down and move our paper down a little so we can use our little ruler guide. Grab your five and a half. Get those edges really good. If you have the score tape, you just go ahead and use your score tape. Like I said, I don't I didn't have enough to go around. Now until I do my next part two. Um, what I want you guys to do is take some printer sheets, some printer paper. Your, um, you can go to Walmart and get the um, ream of paper. Cut it eight and a half by nine, and uh, coffee dye and put it in the oven. Um, I put it at 350, and. That down a little. I put it at 350 and bake it and I keep an eye on it so they're not burning and it's easier if you cut it to size before you bake it just because once you take it out it kind of gets really crinkled and so it's kind of harder to cut I think and then you're gonna find any other embellishments like paper uh, doilies, you can bake those or coffee dyed if you want. Um, you can use real doilies. Um, whatever you have, use it and um, work with it. And also get any. Um, not sure why that wanted to get it. Um, embellishments, ephemeras, old postcards, old stamps, um, anything like that that matches that junk journal kit. That kit has tags and other embellishments, but you want you still want to you know put a touch of your own. Especially if you're gifting it to someone, maybe put something in there that they like. So those are just little ideas to keep in mind. Laces uh, seen by me. Anything you have, bring it out. You're going to probably be using it for this, okay? All right. Hopefully that gets good contact in there. Get those edges really good so they're not lifting. All right, and then get your other one and a half inch. Use your ruler.
use that ruler, guys. That ruler is very helpful. Not too concerned about that because that's going to be wrapped, covered up anyway, so. You know? I'd rather have glue than have no glue and have it break apart. All right, next one and last one is your five and a half. Come on, Tim, come on down. Let me get those edges down really good. Should have gotten it all in. If I didn't, uh, we'll see, right? We are 28 minutes. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. So what we have left now is to glue down our edges, and that that that'll be good. All right. So now the next thing we're gonna do, if I can get some of these rulers out of my way, my collections of rulers. Do that because that's recyclable, guys. Recycle, recycle, recycle. We're going to bend these up a little. Use your bone folder or your burnishing tool. And you're going to nudge on the edge here and nudge on your gussets. Score on your gussets. That kind of helps with the bending when you bend your book. Not too hard where you're going to break your paper, but enough that you're going to do what you need to do to get it right in the gusset. Okay. And nudge right here and kind of press down. Burnish that down. And get that in. Perfect, perfect. All right, let's glue it. Open it up. Or not glue it. Sorry, Ben. Turn it the other way. Sorry. Don't listen to me. No, just kidding. I was about to glue it without doing the other side. All right. Again. Burnish. Burnished here. In between the gussets. Okay. 
we go. All right, and then do your sides as well. I want to show you in a bit what I mean about using that paper that has um, that's white in the inside. And what they did is they kind of colored or they put layers of fibers that are white ones. So this is one, if you can see in the inside, there's white fibers. It's white inside and the outside. Sorry, I have glue all over my hands. And the outside is just the brown color, right? But if you tear it, look, it's white. But if I tear this one, it's brown. This is what you want, something that is that that is the color of the paper. If you got that, you don't want this because when it starts to crack, you'll see that. And that's kind of hard to hide, you know. And sometimes that happens when you're burnishing. Sometimes it will happen. All right, now we're going to cut these little squares off. What do I do with my scissors, ladies? I don't like using Oh, there's Tim. Hey, Timmy. We're going to cut the squares off right up to the edge of the right up to the edge of your chipboard. The tip, not the edge, the tip. So you're going to put that scissors right up to it, butt it up. And the same thing on the other side. Yeah, I don't like paper and I don't normally buy that, but I don't know how I managed to have that one. I bought it by mistake, probably. It's a Hobby Lobby one, which I've never seen to have a problem with Hobby Lobby paper. But, you know? Okay, so we're going to flip it over this way. And yeah, it looks like it's kind of yucky there, but that does dry on the clear. I'm going to get my brayer. Move the brayer. Okay, grab Tim and kind of make a little slit, just a small tid slit there. Do the same thing on this side. You're just going to butt it up to the edge of that chipboard and miter it just a tiny bit. Just a tiny, tiny miter. Right there. Do the same thing on the other side. You don't need a big old miter. So it's not so noticeable on the edge. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our glue and we're going to go right around that edge so that it seals down really good. Again, you're welcome to use your score tape for this if you don't want, you don't feel like you want to deal with the glue mess. Um, tip is that if you do use 
score tape and you have because you know score tape is tends to be a little bit unforgiving when you're placing if you do happen to make a boo-boo because -boo, you know you guys know I I'm notorious for boo-boos just get the heat gun apply it and I'll release it all right I'm going to start in the center I like going from the center out working my way from the center out and burnish and wipe up so you're not hurting your Six minutes in, not bad, okay. Okay, voila. Next side. Same thing. Go around that edge. Center out. Center out. Then you're going to do out here. And then do the same thing on the opposite side. And guys, look at that. I did it under an hour. So our part two will be to put the inside. Little covers. And go from there I'll tell you guys I'll, I'll link below the sizes for this here so you guys will know what to cut your paper and your chipboard and then in the meantime start prepping your journal pages cut them out I have them at um, I cut them at eight and a half by nine I believe I've checked up find out now um, actually I I know I cut the um, printer paper a little bit shorter, smaller. Oh, look at that. That came apart. Cheap brayer. Cheap brayer from Hobby Lobby. Okay, there we have it. Now, kind of use your bone folder assist it with the bending if it bubbles up immediately try to get that out
like a charm. Okay, so let's see if I get it right. Get it right, get it right, get it right. There we go. That's what it should look like, like that. It should look like just like that because, oops, I get some gunk out of my hands. Because what we're going to do inside here, we'll put something um, inside here, we'll put something. So probably we're going to have a signature page or something, some like that, you know. So that kind of stuff takes into place, or we don't know, you know. Might put something else there. Um, I do know that I'm going to do a file folder in here, so these probably will go like so there, just like this. So we might not even do two signatures, I mean, three signatures. We're going to probably do two. I think that's what we're going to do. Something like that. That's what we're going to do. And um, we're going to do a file folder, I think, in here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned. Get your stuff prepped up. And let's get ready to rock and roll this and finish this project. Anyway, I will be seeing you, you guys in the next video. Uh, oh, I forgot. Yes, yes, yes. Um, this one, I cut it. Cut it. What did I cut it? Where's my scissors or my rulers? I cut it at nine, scored it at four and a half by eight and a half. So four and eight and a half by nine, scored it at four and a half. And then my printer paper, I cut it shorter. Um, it was nine. Eight and three quarters, eight and three quarters by eight, eight and uh, should be eight and a half, eight and three quarters by eight, eight and three eighths. Eight and three eighth by eight and a quarter. Actually, it's eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter by eight and three quarters. Eight and a quarter by eight and three quarters for the printer. And go ahead and do three signatures just in case we can squeeze them in. If not, um, you can use that for something else. Um, pull out your sewing machine. And on these, I suggest that you don't score them. I just take them after I cut them. To size eight and a quarter by eight and three quarters. Um, I fold them. I don't score them. I just fold them by hand. But I cut them first before I bake them because it's just a lot harder. I don't know. Just a lot harder. Okay. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.